What the Heck Do I Know presents PM Update with Leah and Mia. And now your host, Leah. Hello, and welcome to What the Heck Do I Know PM Update. I'm Leah. Our top stories tonight in our Positive Correlation segment. Mia talked with Lisa Bauer, who was just awarded the top prize for the MIT Mechanical Engineering De Flores Award competition about finding her inspiration. Also, Mia talks with Brad Jones about trade-offs and how to make smart choices when it comes to work, family, and home. Find out all the details on these stories and positive correlations when we come back, so stay tuned. Hello. I really enjoy making these videos, and if you get value out of them or just enjoy watching them, please hit like, subscribe, and feel free to leave me a comment. Welcome back. In our top story tonight, Mia met with Lisa Bauer recently to talk to her about her $20,000 engineering award and what inspired her to go into mechanical engineering and win this prestigious prize. Mia, please tell us more about this amazing woman. Well, Leah, I can certainly tell you she is an amazing woman. When I asked her about her inspiration, her answer started with a simple no. Lisa explains that she grew up in a small town with a single mother and a younger brother. There was never much money for extras, but they got by. The one constant in her young life was the word no. It was either no, you can't have that, or no, you can't do that, or looking at the lives of people around her and saying, no, that isn't what I want for myself, or no, I'm going to do things differently. The biggest no in her early life came just before she started high school. She asked her mom if she got accepted into MIT, would she be able to go? When Lisa heard that no, it broke her heart. She had always been interested in working with her hands and building things, and that no was, for a moment, the end of her dream to study at her dream school, MIT. She recalls being really sad about it for about a week, and then realizing that other people's limitations were not hers. Lisa's inspiration was to prove to those around her that she could do and have what others said she couldn't, and make the kinds of choices that would take her life in a different direction. On her first day of high school, she scheduled a meeting with her guidance counselor about her goals. Her counselor thought it was a lofty goal, but with proper planning, she was capable. He also informed her that MIT does not consider finances when accepting students into their programs, and if she does get in, given her family's low income, she would likely receive a scholarship. They planned out the courses she would need to take, the grades she would need, activities that would be helpful, and when she mentioned signing up for a couple of college classes at the local university, he explained the process and provided the forms for her to sign up agreeing to provide a recommendation for her if it was needed. They also set up future meetings every two to four weeks to review her progress. The rest was up to Lisa. She studied hard, often missing out on social events, but the thought of being able to tell herself yes when everyone else said no kept her going. She joined the local robotics club and did mechanical experiments for the science fair every year and even managed to place first in her state in her junior year. Lisa managed a 780 on the math portion of the SAT, but even with all the hard work, it still wasn't certain that she would be accepted. Lisa knows she was really lucky even with all the hard work she put in, and very grateful to the few people who did encourage her and helped her build a plan that got her to her ultimate goal. Lisa is currently pursuing a master's degree and hasn't decided whether or not she will go for PhD, but recommends to all young women who are interested in mechanical engineering to tell themselves yes, no matter how many people tell them no. Thank you, Mia, for that inspiring story. Who knew that the word no could be so powerful and inspiring? When we return, Brad Jones has some conflicting priorities in his life. Learn how he managed it all and made some smart choices when we return for the second half of Positive Correlations on PM Update. Our 
trade-off story tonight starts in the suburb of the city. It's the story of Brad Jones, but it could be about any one of you on any given night of the week. Mia spent some time with Brad this past week to talk to him about his experiences and how he made the best choices he could under the circumstances. Here's Mia with more. Thank you, Leah. Brad Jones was having a really hectic week. He found himself with too much to do at work, with his family, and on the home. His wife was out of town for two weeks on a business trip. He had two major project deadlines at work. His son, Brian, had the flu, and he really needed to do his fall chores of repairing and cleaning gutters and chimney this weekend. Brad says it all started on Friday evening. His wife, Brenda, called to let him know she would be home late and that she would need to leave Sunday night for in-person client meetings over the next two weeks to handle a crisis at her company. Since Brenda is normally the one who handles most of Brian's schedule, she spent Saturday going over the itinerary with him and arranged carpool with other parents for the events that Brad wouldn't be able to cover. Then they discussed the gutters and chimney, both of which needed immediate attention. The gutters were full of leaves and the chimney was starting to smoke. A rainstorm kept Brad from working on them that weekend, which also made the gutter problem worse. Then their 12-year-old son, Brian, started feeling sick, and it was clear by Sunday morning he had the flu. Brad was really starting to feel the stress by Sunday night when Brenda left for the airport. He wanted to handle all of these situations himself and do them well, but there wasn't any way for him to be in so many places at once. Brad thought back to his project management training and the triangle of quality, time, and cost, and knew he was going to have to make some decisions on where to concentrate his efforts this week. Brad decided that the quality of housework was just going to have to suffer, since taking care of a sick child and finishing his work projects was more important than cooking and cleaning. Housework would have to be done on an as-needed basis only, and they would be ordering takeout more frequently over the next two weeks. Food and cleanliness quality would go down, as well as time spent on these activities, while costs increased. But it was worth it to make sure Brian was being taken care of and his work projects would not suffer. He also called a handyman service to take care of the gutters and chimney. He scheduled them to come out to the house before the end of the week to take care of these items. In this case, quality of work goes up along with the cost, but once again, it is a decrease in the amount of time Brad has to spend on these things. Monday morning, Brad spoke to his boss about the problems at home and made a proposal for pushing back one of his two deadlines. Brad came up with an idea to improve the results they would provide to one of their clients and asked his boss to approve the additional work and to make the proposal to the client to see if they would agree to the exchange for a two-week extension on the project deadline. In this situation, quality and time are going up for the client and cost will go up for Brad's company, so the whole triangle is getting larger. Brad's boss agreed and so did the client, so everything was set. When Brenda called Monday night to check on her family, Brad told her about the plans he had put in place to address all of the things that needed to get done. And although worried about Brian, she felt confident they would both be okay while she was away. Over the next two weeks, the plans that Brad set in motion for getting everything done went as expected. The house was a mess and there was pizza for dinner a couple of nights, but Brian recovered before the first week was over and was eventually able to start helping around the house. Brad stayed up late a few nights to work on his projects at home, so he got a little less sleep. The handyman did a great job on the gutters and chimney, and even though it cost more than it would have if Brad was doing these things by himself, it was one less thing he and Brenda had to worry about. Brad managed to finish one of his two projects on time at work, and eventually when he was able to finish the extended project, the client was thrilled with the results. Brad's boss appreciated that he was honest about his conflicting priorities, and instead of providing a lower quality product, was able to make the client happier, even if it did cost the company a little more. Brad was thankful his project management training helped him quickly realize what his options were 
and put positive plans into action early on. He says that understanding the quality time cost triangle really puts things into perspective and allows you to make informed choices when your plans need to change. Thank you for that story, Mia. What a great example of using project management training in everyday life. Change is inevitable and being able to roll with it is a valuable skill. That's all for PM Update with Leah and Mia and our Positive Correlation segment for this week. Thank you for watching and see you next time on What the Heck Do I Know and our next episode of PM Update. Good night. Hey there, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I also love seeing comments too.